Hello everyone, and welcome to my General Hospital official channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. Today on General Hospital, TJ and Molly have a heart-to-heart, -heart, Nina requests a favor, and Dante informs Rocco about his mother. Laura comes in Silver Springs and walks inside Lulu's room. She is astonished to see Cyrus there with his Bible. She drags him out of the room and questions why he's here since she hasn't seen him in months. He hasn't seen her either and assumes she's been preoccupied with her mayoral duties. He reveals that he sees Lulu frequently to read from the Bible to her. He is astonished they haven't met. She asks why he didn't tell her. He acknowledges he knows she has a lot going on and apologizes for not clearing it with her. He offers to halt his visits if she wishes. She acknowledges his intentions and admits there are problems with her daughter's most recent sets of tests. Kevin arrives and learns of Cyrus's visits. Cyrus reveals that he also ministers to other patients. A doctor enters and says she is conducting additional tests to see what is wrong with Lulu and will speak with them later. Cyrus excuses himself because he believes Laura and Kevin require time alone. Laura and Kevin head inside to visit Lulu. Laura can detect that Lulu's condition is deteriorating based on what the doctor is not saying. She can't face the notion of Lou living her life in this manner, therefore she must maintain hope and strength. Kevin embraces her and tells her to hold on to that hope and to him. The doctor returns later with an update. She reveals that Lulu's liver tests show that it is compromised. If this situation persists, her liver will fail. Laura cries, are you telling me that my daughter is going to die? Ava phones Scott from the gallery and leaves a message inquiring what is going on and where the pharmacist is. She tells him to call her back before throwing her phone across the room. Nina walks in and says, I think you dropped something. Ava asks what she wants. Nina says she's reserved half a page in crimson for the artist she wishes to promote. Ava praises her, but she has more pressing issues to deal with. Ava complains about being detained for attempted murder, that her lawyer is missing, and that the FBI agent she trusted has his own agenda. She advises Nina to just say it, she has only herself to blame. Nina says she wanted to see her suffer, but not in this way. Nina questions why she assumed Kate's would want to assist her with a custody case, considering it is not typical FBI territory. Ava describes how Kate's protected her during a dispute with Sonny, and how she jumped in with Kate's when he volunteered to aid her. She claims that all that counts to her is Avery, but she is suddenly scared that she has made a grave mistake. Ava claims she now recognizes Kate's obsession with bringing down Sonny. Nina is perplexed, as this should bolster her case if Sonny goes to prison. Ava claims she is still facing charges in connection with Christina's fall and may end up in prison. Nina wonders what actually transpired that day. Ava insists it was an accident. Ava sobs because Nina knows her, they were great friends before she blew it. Ava claims that no matter how terrible and selfish she is, Nina knows she would never harm a child. Ava explains that Christina came to see her after she received a subpoena. She claims Christina barged into the room and screamed at her. She claims that after she placed her hands on her, Christina backed away, tripped over some baggage, and fell through the window. She insists she didn't push Christina and begs Nina to believe it. Nina recognizes that this is a complicated situation with fast-paced events. Nina understands that losing your credibility is not fun. She knows a thing or two about it. She knows what happens when you interfere with people's lives and no one wants to believe in you. She tells Ava she is a good mother and that if she sees Scott, she would tell him she needs him. Ava thanks her and apologizes. Nina responds, me, too. When Dante gets home, Sam hugs him. Sam asks if he can watch the kids so she can go see Christina at her mother's. Christina's absence from her mother's house is revealed by Dante. Dante may not have all of the information, but he does know that Kate's arrested Christina and that Christina allegedly injured Ava, an FBI witness. Sam is aware that her mother is most certainly involved, and Dante explains that there is more. He tells her Laura informed him that something is wrong with Lulu. 
They settle down, and Dante is unsure what is going on with Lulu and does not want to discuss it with Rocco until he learns more. Diane contacts Sam to inform her that an emergency hearing for Christina has been granted. Dante begs her to leave, and she asks him to keep her updated on Lulu's situation. Later, Rocco walks downstairs and learns that they are having pizza tonight. Dante informs Rocco that they need to talk about his mother. They sit down, and Dante says that Laura will not be coming tonight as promised because she decided to see Lulu instead. He explains that the physicians need to talk to her about certain tests, and he isn't sure what's going on yet. Rocco admits that he has images and videos of his mother, but her voice never sounds right in them. He's worried about forgetting what his mother sounds like. However, he understands that they cannot give up hope, his mother is holding on, and they must as well. He hopes he is the first thing she sees when she opens her eyes, and that it happens quickly. Molly checks in on TJ at the hospital. They talk about Christina and how Jordan punished her for using her ADA privileges to see Ava in jail. She could have been suspended or fired, but his mother and Robert chose not to report it. She does not regret confronting Ava, but she apologizes for many things and hopes he will forgive her. Molly honestly apologizes for avoiding him and failing to deal with the loss of their kid. She describes what happened between Kate's and Christina at the hospital, claiming Christina attempted to murder Ava. TJ says that doesn't sound right. Molly agrees, and she and her mother rush to Christina's defense. However, she now wonders if she should not have acted so swiftly to protect her sister. She says that after confronting Ava angrily, she could envision Christina doing the same to her. TJ is unsure and pulls up the photographs. Molly believes those photos could tell another tale, perhaps Ava was fending Christina off. She hates to acknowledge it, but Christina's actions may have caused their baby's death. TJ reveals that he looked to Ava for answers. He claims her opinion regarding Molly is consistent with what Ava told him, implying Christina may not be wholly blameless. Molly believes that if Christina had not gone to meet Ava, their child may still be alive. Molly apologizes for placing them in this situation by insisting on using Christina as a surrogate. She knows she pushed him away and let him down. She says she is deeply sorry. TJ accepts her apology and expresses his deep love for her. Molly receives notice that Christina is scheduled for an emergency hearing. Molly feels she should leave, and TJ agrees. He says they'll figure it all out tomorrow. At the police, Alexis informs Kate that there will be an urgent bail hearing and that he intends to pursue malicious prosecution. In the interrogation room, Sonny consoles Christina and pledges to take care of everything. Christina maintains she never attempted to kill Ava, and her sole threat was to expose the truth about her on the stand. Sonny informs Christina that this is not about her, it is about Jagger's vendetta against him for some horrific things he did years ago. Jagger wants to settle the score and is pursuing her because he knows how much he adores her. Alexis enters and announces that she and Diane have an emergency hearing and will meet them outside the courtroom. Sunny and Alexis leave, and Christina replays the events in her brain. Ava grabbed her, and she fell over the bag. Sunny meets with Alexis outside the courtroom. He is aware that this is her first case in a long time and inquires as to her well-being. Alexis assures him that Diane believes in her, and seeing Kate's smug expression fuels her desire to succeed. Sunny knows that being there will drive Kate's insane, so he will sit there and say nothing. Meanwhile, the federal prosecutor meets with Cates. He is uncomfortable presenting a case to a judge that is not clear-cut. Cates orders him to make it plain. He claims Christina is charged with attempted murder of an FBI witness and wants her to remain in jail until trial. The session starts, and the judge is upset by the late hour. Alexis argues that her client was recently released from the hospital after undergoing a C-section and that keeping her in a cell is dangerous to her health. She also claims no evidence was offered to support the arrest and no charges have been filed. The judge asks the federal prosecutor if this is correct and if there is no evidence. The prosecutor argues the evidence is testimony from a reliable witness, but the FBI did not have time to file it owing to the late hour. The judge declares this a terrible waste of time and releases Christina. Suddenly, Kate's rises up and says, No. You are making a mistake. 
He looks over to Sonny. According to Kate's, the moment Christina exits this courtroom, her father will whisk her away. The judge informs Kate's that he has not yet been found in contempt because of his badge. She informs Kate's that he has 48 hours to file the evidence and get his RICO charges in order, or he would be the one in jail. Kate's, irritated, asks the prosecutor what that was. The prosecutor informs Kate's that he has brought him a horrible case and that he must clean up his act or he would prosecute him and steal his badge while he is in jail. Molly arrives and, outside the courthouse, learns from Sam what occurred. Sam says their mother held her own while Kate's had a complete meltdown. Sam claims Kate's supplied no evidence and may face charges. She believes the accusations against Christina will be dismissed because there is no case and Kate's is only attempting to reach Sonny. Sam finds the situation ludicrous, citing Christina's recent pregnancy loss as the reason. Molly and Sam catch up on GH. Sam quickly realizes what she has said and apologizes. She asks Molly why she isn't here. Molly admits she only found out about the hearing through a friend. The court did not want her to know since it could reflect partiality. She sobs since she was also with TJ discussing their daughter's burial. Sam embraces her sister. Christina, Sonny, and Alexis return to Alexis' home. Christina compliments her mother on her performance in court and expresses gratitude to her parents for their support. Alexis says they love and adore her, and Sonny promises to always protect her. Kate's walks to the gallery and laments to Ava about Christina's arrest and the judge's decision to release her. Ava inquires about Christina's arrest, as this is news to her. He explains that after they discussed her story concerning the images, he went ahead and arrested Christina. But now she's walking. Ava asks if he's spoken with Scott. He hasn't, and Ava is concerned because she hasn't heard from him. She believes she will need her lawyer now more than ever. Kate's claims she doesn't need Scott because he's her only hope left. He tells Ava that she must make the statement he wants and that she will do so in the manner he specifies. She claims it's late and she's exhausted, so they'll deal with it tomorrow. Kate's rejects, citing a 48-hour deadline to resolve the issue. He says they're going to start now and improve her statement. Nina makes a call from somewhere outside. She says she's desperate, so she's contacted them. She notices they owe her a favor and is prepared to collect. Let's begin this week's column with what I consider to be the best and happiest portion of the week, the conclusion of Mac and Cody's father-slash-son tale. Having James flee only to be rescued by Cody was the ideal way for Mac to understand he was being an ass and let go of his resentment. It also made him realize that Cody was not the same person he was a year ago, or even when he first arrived in town. I can't wait for any pleasant Scorpio Jones Bell moments to happen. Felicia returns to the boathouse docks and asks Mac if he is pleased. He is and says she was correct. She laughs, she's always correct. They kiss. Anna arrives at Laura's workplace, as per her invitation. Laura informs that they have a meeting with the incoming WSB station chief. Laura is aware she recently arrested him. Anna says that Brennan has been acquitted and is now a fully accredited agent, and they will most likely receive no further explanation from the WSB. Brennan comes, and Laura explains that she set up this meeting because they all share common interests. Laura gets right to the point, believing that Anna and Brennan's shared background and skill sets present a one-of-a-kind opportunity. She wants them to find Valentine Cassidine. Anna claims the FBI is looking for him, which is beyond her reach. Brennan observes that the WSB strives not to meddle with FBI investigations. Laura is concerned since Valentine has a granddaughter. Anna tells Charlotte that Valentine would never endanger her. Laura receives a call, which interrupts their conversation. Something came up, so she excuses herself for a moment. Dr. Navarro departs, and Christina wonders what full recovery entails. Alexis believes it implies her body will heal. Christina inquires, what about the rest of me? Alexis admits that it will take time, but her heart will improve too. Curtis and Stella talk in a meeting room. He thanks Stella for guiding them through the legalities for a baby's funeral. Stella wishes to help TJ and Molly in any way she can. Stella has handled the majority of it. 
The only thing left to do is finish the birth certificate. TJ arrives only to discover that Molly has not yet arrived. He says Molly can catch up, so they should get started. Stella explains that they need a name for the birth certificate, but TJ admits they've never decided on one. TJ and Molly love each other, but it isn't always enough for a relationship to overcome the obstacles they face. The loss of Molly and TJ's baby child could be enough to end their once happy domestic partnership. Of course, this might lead to new romantic partnerships for TJ and Molly. Thanks for watching if you like this video, so please don't forget to subscribe my channel and don't miss any update.